Hello everybody and welcome to another video. I'm thinking, we'll see how it goes, we'll see how many questions we get, thinking of doing a weekly Q&A for you guys. I always enjoyed doing Q&A, so we'll try and do a weekly one. It does mean that I am reliant on having a lot of questions. What I did for these first few questions was threw up an annotation rather lazily on my expansions video earlier in the week and got some questions that way. That does mean a fair few of them were about expansions, but I'll try and not harp on about that too much in this video. So yeah, leave any questions you might have down below guys and we'll see if we can actually make a series out of this. Anyway, we'll do at least one episode. The footage in the background is going to be me just faffing about trying to do interesting stuff in Guild Wars 2 you might not have seen. And I'll try and keep that up for most of these kinds of videos. So it will be maybe me just leveling in areas you haven't seen for ages. I'm always surprised. I found out yesterday about an event in Queensdale, the earliest area of Queensdale, near where the bandits poison the water. I found an event there that I never knew existed in the game at all the other day. It was bizarre. It wasn't as profound and as exciting as, I guess, ArenaNet imagined moments like that would be but it was pretty crazy I was like wow I did not know that there was this event here so uh, it will just be weird stuff like that you know um, also uh, there has been data mined the new ascended armor in the game yes ascended armor it's not available yet but you can preview it see what it looks like it's very elaborate highly embellished really um, complicated embroidered looking gear that a lot of people think looks really ugly but I think uh, it all depends on the way you've dyed it and I think it's quite reminiscent of some of the other earlier like the heavy stuff looks a lot like obsidian armor from Guild Wars 1 just even more elaborate and even more embellished the light armor is probably the one most people think is ugliest I think it looks kind of ugly but it's just really Decadent. It's got so much going on with it. So anyway, I'll, I'll be showing that in the footage as well for this video. Seems kind of interesting to me. If you've got any questions about that, maybe we can talk about that next episode. But yeah, so um, also at the start of this video too, you will see some fan art that someone made in for me in reference to something that happened in the latest Tribulation video for the Super Adventure Box. Now, sadly, we couldn't finish all of that because we took a break and then the servers like died and kept kicking us out over and over and over again. So we'll have to finish our Tribulation run now next time the super adventure box comes around hope you guys are all right with that so i wanted to throw up that uh picture anyway all right enough preamble let's get into the questions as i say these were from the expansion video so let's start with one of those about that specific topic shall we from tag 42 who says if they were to make a new expansion on which continent would you want the expansion to take place on and why quite a simple question but I think I've got a bit of a different perspective on this than most players. Most players are going to turn around and say oh I want to go to Cantha or oh I want to go to Elona I want to go to the far north the far Shiver Peaks just like we saw in Guild Wars 1 I actually don't have any of those answers. Yes they would be kind of cool to go to I think Cantha gets in general from the community the biggest response to this question partly because I feel like Cantha just has a really well defined aesthetic and culture and set of lore to do with it but also on the Guild Wars one timeline, Factions, Cantha was the first one that we managed to go to, so I think that's on a lot of people's minds. Um, Elona was personally my favourite, but I, as I said, I wouldn't recommend either of these. Eventually, I'd like to go to them, but first, I think we should stay with Tyria. I didn't really tap into this this whole topic in my expansion video, because I think saying oh, they should give us an expansion because they because Cantha was cool is a bit subjective, right? But had I gone into this area, I would have talked about how I think really they need to stick with the main Tyria map we already see. Okay, press M in game. Open your world map. Look at that map. It's huge. And we get to see, honestly, how much of it? Maybe 33% tops? There is loads of stuff around Tyria that's right next to us already that I, from looking at the map alone, get very excited about possibly going to. For some areas, it's because we've seen them in Guild Wars 1 and I want to go back to. Look, if, if lots of people want to go to Factions, because that was the first expansion, surely, by that same logic, really, we should be wanting to go to the Crystal Desert, we should be wanting to go to the Fire Island Chain, and we should want to be exploring the Delgamore Front more than anything else, because these were three areas that were available in Guild Wars 1 at launch and still aren't available in Guild Wars 2, right? The Crystal Desert in particular, I feel like could be an absolutely beautiful addition to Guild Wars 2. If the new map, for those of you that don't know, haven't been following PvP, they've been occasionally adding new maps. Pretty much every single new map they've added has been useless for competitive play, which is one of the reasons PvP is suffering a little bit. But one of the new maps they added um, does look, at first glance, I didn't believe this, but I'm beginning to believe it now. One of the ma new maps they added, Skyhammer, looks like it is set in the Crystal Desert. This map was added at the same time as on the PvE side of the game, we were getting a lot of new lore about a group of people that had recently visited the Crystal Desert in connection with the dragon that once lived there, Glint. So there was this whole kind of, oh, are we going to go to the desert a few months ago? And then it turned out that we weren't at all. But it seems like we might have seen with this PvP map a, a snippet of the Crystal Desert. 
And that's kind of cool. They've got like the big sandworms there and it, it looks very interesting that we now have an Asuran base as a part of the Crystal Desert. But otherwise, I didn't find it to be as good as the Crystal Desert could be. If that is what the whole Crystal Desert ends up looking like, then I guess I'll be a little bit disappointed. But for anyone that played Guild Wars 1 and for those of you that didn't, right, let me explain to you. The Crystal Desert was split into so many different really varied regions, okay? Uh, you might have a very limited idea of what a desert is in real life. There are tons of different landscapes and environments and, and ways a desert can look, you know, based on the amount of large rocks that are littering the landscape, the, uh, the amount of grasses potentially that could be around, uh, whether it's an oasis -y area. And Guild Wars 1 really tapped into this. There was one area known as the Salt Flats that was very dry, very uh, crumbly, cracked earth beneath you. It wasn't necessarily sand. It was all really bright white, the salt flats, right? It was very flat plains with suddenly big jagged rocks coming out. And then in other areas, the dunes of despair is very much what you'd imagine from, say, the Sahara Desert. Big rolling sand dunes. And then you had other areas like where there were great mesas hanging about. It, it was fantastic. There were oasis regions. And then on top of that in Guild Wars 1, they also layered in tons of history. There were ruins from at least two different really distinct civilizations that had been in the desert once before and fe and fallen. The, uh, the Marganites, who were once seafaring people which we might have seen a little bit of if the community had chosen to get the Abaddon Fractal rather than the Thormanova Reactor Fractal, but hey. And we also saw the ruins of Chiraios' people. Then we also had um, the remnants or the, the lasting fragments of the Forgotten Civilization. There were at least these three and hints of many more civilizations that were there, but those big three, they all had their own distinct architecture. The Marganites had their rotting ships and the wood, which really doesn't make much sense because wood wouldn't still be there after a thousand years, but they, they had their own distinct look and the, the big sailcloths out in the middle of the dunes. Then you had uh, Chiriosis people had ruins that looked like metropolitan cities that you'd see. It was like New York had been in the Crystal Desert and nuked down and now you see like literal skyscrapers. It was this bizarre really interesting style, right? And then the Forgotten had their own Egyptian magical kind of architecture littering the area too. All of these elements, okay, ArenaNet combined beautifully in what was, uh, compared to other regions of the game, quite a small region. And for that, the Crystal Desert was in incredible. Such a good region in Guild Wars 1 and I would be so excited to see that come back in Guild Wars 2. Incredibly excited. So that would be one of the areas on the top of my list. And this is one of the reasons why I feel like we should get these things before we go off to Cantha and Elona. Cantha and Elona are exciting, right? And as I said, they're exciting because they have very distinct styles and music and cultures to them. But that's going to take a lot of time for ArenaNet to develop. If they want to nail that, if they want to get that right, they really have to put a lot of effort into that, that huge, huge undertaking. I think that um, the Crystal Desert is very distinct in itself, but it's also more piecemeal. You know, it's something that they can really focus on and execute nicely within their current living story strategy. While uh, Elona and Factions, I feel like it would be really difficult to do uh, as the living story currently stands. It would probably be something more to do, more akin to a regular expansion. So yeah, that, that's one big reason why I think we should go but also um it just sort of irritates me we've always known guild wars 2 is a fully persistent game okay it, unlike guild wars 1 obviously you can meet people wherever you are mostly um but it's still closed off maps right they are huge maps but they are closed off maps it's not an open world not a fully open world this isn't skyrim this isn't what many other mmos are like world of warcraft where you can just travel anywhere and that alone is a little bit annoying but it always uh, irritates me that you can open up the world map and we can only travel to 33 percent of it and there's so many exciting looking areas, both because of lore that exists, because of stuff we saw in Guild Wars 1, and even just because stuff looks kind of interesting. There's a weird circular area, for example, in the uh, Maguma Waste that I kind of just want to go to. Guild Wars 1 had the same problem, and I always used to look at the map in Guild Wars 1 and be really excited by um, by land masses and interesting things that were out there on the map. Like, uh, a massive thing was north of Kryta, there were these two giant lakes called the Giant's Basins. I always wanted to go beyond those and swim in them and see what was there, and we got a glimpse of what was north of that in, in Eye of the North but still that whole region up there was was this big mystery. There was another lake as well right in the top left uh, an unnamed lake in the top left of the map above the Maguma jungle. I always wanted to go there too and I feel the same thing in Guild Wars 2 and I remember when Factions was first released I was really disappointed. I, I, at the time, I wasn't very uh, keyed into what was going on with the developments of the game. I just knew that they were going to expand the map. And when I bought Factions, for a moment, I was like, oh, wow, look, I'm in a new continent. And then I thought, oh, what? So we don't actually get to see all this other stuff on the map. I feel like if you, you just leave vast chunks of that map we can already see unplayable, it sort of un undervalues 
everything that they are, right? It makes you question, oh, are we ever going to be able to see them anyway? Does it really matter? And there's so many candidates in Guild Wars 2 for filling those things out. Like, for example, there's, there's one really thin strip of land, okay? And I think this would be perfect for Living Story. There's a really thin strip of land between Timberline Falls and, like, uh, the Blood Tide Coast and Sparkfly Fen. And it runs up there through the mountain. It's like, what? Why, why is there this region here? And it's perfectly sized for a small, new, explorable map for uh, ArenaNet to add in. I would love to see us be able to go there. I think that's quite a plausible thing that they could do. Um, another whole area, the Delgamore Front, right? Look at that huge area. And I love how the, the Delgamore Front is like this just big square, okay? And to me, it's always excited me that they could just add the Delgamore Front in. Um, and I know they've probably pushed their technology as far as they can and they can't make bigger maps. But because that's some what, such a big, perfect square, I love the idea of the Delgamore Front just being added and it's all one map. Just like one huge map that has a really high player capacity in it. So you can always meet. I think that would be crazy. Like, if you look at that map, that looks so, so exciting to me. And I, I, as I said, I think it would be a shame if we if we just skipped all of that and went to another region straight away I'm in no hurry to get off of this continent right now Tyria still has a lot to offer us and I think practically speaking too, you know all this stuff about oh they don't want to spread the player base out too much it makes sense to add maps that adjoin onto current areas we've been to right just because in, in just by proximity I know this is a game with waypoints and people don't really travel as you would in other MMOs um, so this is limited but just by way of proximity it helps to keep people generally within the same area the one thing I don't want to see them do is, sadly, the only real map that they've added is exactly what I didn't want them to do, um, is what they did with South Sun. South Sun sucked, okay? South Sun sucked because they have this huge, beautiful-looking map, all these potential areas that we could go to. And then when they added South Sun, they decided to retcon it. Oh, this is just all water here? Okay, let's just invent a whole new island. Boom, we'll just add that massive island in there. It really irritates me, the positioning of, of South Sun Cove, and it really irritates me that it's just popped out or out of nowhere. That, again, completely undervalues everything else we see on the map. If they keep doing stuff like that, then it's going to be like, oh, all this excitement, like, oh, what could be up on the Isles of Janthir? What's going on with that volcanic island chain in the very top left of the map? What's this? What's this? That all just gets completely cut away and undervalued because it's like, oh, they don't really care. They're not going to honour what they did with their map. This was just a little thing an artist did before launch a game and they don't have solid ideas about it. They're just going to throw in an entire island chain or completely revamp an area. And I'm not saying they have necessarily done that. They have a, to a small degree with the South Sun, but, you know, it's chipping away, you know. I don't want to see them do that. Please, just look. You've got so much fascinating stuff. Use what's already there. Just give us compelling reasons to go there, not arbitrary. Oh, uh, these people have just arrived and we've never heard of them before and they only come every now and then and we're just going to go wandering over, you know, like they did with the Zephyr Sang. Them. Just give us solid reasons to go to the areas that already exist and then build off of those for your lore. Then just add whole new island chains. That really annoyed me. Uh, but yeah, okay, I've rambled way too long on that. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would do. That's where I would like to have an expansion take place. Um, and I'm curious what you guys think. Because I think most people, as I say, would just say, oh, go to another continent. Let's go with a, a couple of quick questions to the humble bees. Says, uh, did you lend your voice to read a poem in a BBC show about German travel? Uh, this doesn't really give us too related, so this is going to be very quick. He says, if not, some guy sounds exactly like you. No, I did not. But I have been getting loads of messages recently, and I've never actually acknowledged it on my channel, as far as I remember. Um, yes, guys, I did do voice over work for Skywind. I am not complete with that, that voice over work at the moment. But all of the Ultima, the male Ultima in Skywind... Uh, which is a mod that um, adds the entire province and game of Morrowind into the Skyrim engine. All of those uh, characters, that's me. Um, I think I did an okay job, but also a lot of those characters look, they're like really, you know, they're, they're 30, 40 something men, really burly. Um, and my voice just does not sound like a person like that. As far as, like, I, I see my voice coming out of some of these characters' mouths and they're like, Ooh! I, I'm, I'm a 40 year old man and I look ridiculous. Like my voice just doesn't sound like it fits at all to me. Um, but I think I did good and that, that's been incredibly fun doing voice work. Really, really fun. I would love to like do more of it at some point. But yes, yeah, so I, I wanted to take this opportunity. Sorry for hijacking your question, Humblebees, but no, I didn't do anything about German travel. Zikar Ross says, uh, can I get your view on the picture on the coming soon spot on the Guild Wars 2 release page? What does that represent? I have no idea right now. Some people have been saying it could have been Mad King. I will put it on the screen. Some people have been saying maybe it's Mad King Thorn. I don't think so. I really don't. It looks a lot more like a Norn, maybe Havrun, a son of Svani, Ch Shaman or something. I'm not sure how that fits in though. We already have two big set pieces for the living story right now. We've got uh, the uh, Halloween's coming back with Mad King Thorn and obviously all this stuff with Scarlet. I think pairing Mad King Thorn and Scarlet Briar up would be the most fascinating, incredible thing they 
could do if they honor it properly like these two characters fit well together they really do that could be really really fun love to see that but uh i don't know whether they will because now we've got this release page image that doesn't seem to represent anything related to what's currently going on very weird it could mark a return to the story of braham maybe with his girlfriend who suspiciously just disappeared to uh, like be kidnapped so so she says in an aether blade in a uh, molten facility and then just arrives again later on i don't know uh, maybe it's got something to do with that we'll have to see um it's Seems like a big curveball though is a curveball really what we want right now though i don't think so i want a cohesive story damn it not not just dragon i like if this is going to be a, a revamp of um the dungeon in frost gorge sound honor of the waves and it's just like another excuse oh we're just wandering over here blah 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 then that's going to annoy me it really will i don't want to see that um, another quick question before one final one on expansions from Rusty5707. This is a bit more about the channel, but Guild Wars related. When are you going to finish the Guild Wars 1 lore series? It was interesting and I would like to see how it ends. I get this question constantly. Um, I am going to finish it, guys. I promise you, I am still working on the series. Uh, it, it just takes a lot of effort to put that stuff forward. And it's because I can't do the art on my own. And I hate, like, cracking a whip at people and saying, Oh, work faster, work faster, work faster to get other really talented artists in. Um, I put tons of effort into the most recent episode which uh, was the beginning of the faction storyline and most people who watch that series don't even really know that that factions episode exists and we're currently in the faction series so I will take this opportunity to remind people that yes that does exist yes I am still working on it it ends on a really good cliffhanger I like the new style that we're working with it and um, it just might be a little while because as I say it's a lot of effort but also I think that series because we're now in factions would do really well if arena net start murmuring about you know a return to canter at some point given what I've just said and if their thoughts are anywhere in line with mine that could be a long time before we ever see Canter again so I'm not going to be waiting until an expansion is announced or something but it means I'm not necessarily trying to rush it out before launch I was really trying to rush all of those videos out but now you know we've got time to really do each one justice so yes it is still happening um, and there'll be a link in the description if you guys are interested in the most recent episode I'm really proud of the most recent episode and I am very much excited to do the next ones it's just it's a lot of like management stuff right so that's what's going on with that series okay Back to a real Guild Wars 2 question. This is related to the expansion video again from Rose Salone, who says, Your whole argument in this, in this video I made for an expansion is based on one point, okay? An expansion is needed to get new and recurring players into Guild Wars 2. If that is true, we should not see a lot of new players coming to the game. My question for you is, how do you know this? How do you know that Guild Wars 2 does not get new players? That's not what I mean at all. Guild Wars 2 does get new players, and indeed, ArenaNet announced very recently that the game is growing, okay? A video is like that with the expansion thing. I think it's a real problem with the game right now, and I would love ArenaNet to get some direction on it. It's tell us, no, this is why, or tell us, yes, this is why. Don't tell us that you've not had the discussions yet. That's, that's why I feel like that's a really important video to have made. But videos like that tend to attract a lot of people who have been out of the game for a long time and they want a place to sort of vent some negativity or sort of justify it. Oh, hey, this is why I've not been playing and yeah, now I can sort of bitch about it a little bit. And people get carried away with that negativity. I tried to leave it out of the video itself and you'll notice I never said that the game is going down and down and down. I said that... Over a period of months and years, people will be less excited by the living story strategy and it will go down. Guarantee you, and I thoroughly believe that. But currently, the game is not going down. ArenaNet announced very recently that their numbers are uh, still climbing. They've been climbing and climbing and climbing. In particular, every year they said when they were developing Guild Wars 1, they always saw their numbers drop during the summer holidays. Summer holidays were never really a time when people like to play the games that much. But for Guild Wars 2, and, and that's sort of a, a market trend, right? But with Guild Wars 2, they've seen their numbers going up and up and up, even through this usual summer slump, right? And then that's a really positive sign for the game. It does mean that the Living Story, to an extent, is working and bringing people. But here's the thing. I don't think that will last. I think the majority of those players are just people that remembered Guild Wars 2 from a year ago and want to see what's different about it and are coming back. I think an incredibly low percentage of those players are new players. And I think a lot of that is coming from their free-to-play weekends, which are a good thing, and I, d I don't deny that. But they could be having their free-to-play weekends and so much more if they were releasing real marketable boxed expansions. Well, not necessarily even boxed, but uh, actual marketable stuff in terms of expansions. They could be having their cake and eating it too. Yes, they are still getting numbers. Yes, the free-to-play weekends 
are still an asset to the game and enabling it to grow and it is still going up and people shouldn't ignore that but I don't think it is as much as it could be and I think it is hard capped at the number of players that were excited about Guild Wars 2 generally at launch yes there's going to be some give and take but that, that that is honestly my views on it and that's why I still feel like a video like that where I talk about expansions and where arena net should be going to grow the game um, that that's still important yeah they can be climbing a little bit but they could be going a lot more so that was generally uh, what I was going for there and hopefully that sort of answers your question Ah, hell, one last one as well. Why not? It will just make it to a 20-minute video. Elo Killer 2 says, So, the official trailer for Guild Wars 2 was really bad, and that got me thinking. Why did ArenaNet push for a live-action trailer that had nothing to do with the actual game? I've seen this approach to many other current games now, and it always seems like they're almost mimicking Guild Wars 2. So, my question to you is, do you prefer live-action trailer, cinematic, or trailer with in-game footage? And which approach would be best for Guild Wars 2 if they do decide to make an expansion? I always, um praised Guild Wars 2 um, and ArenaNet for never doing a CGI trailer because CGI trailers, yeah, they can look badass and get people excited, but they never really show you anything about the game. And I feel like that's sort of useless. I, I remember back when I was posting that on Guild Wars 2 Guru, I was always like, yeah, look at how excited people are getting about Guild Wars 2 and they're not even using CGI trailers. CGI trailers are something that game companies use when their game itself isn't ready to be shown. Look, uh, ArenaNet are getting people excited about their game by showing them the game, not hiding behind CGI. This is badass and you know it was saving the money so they were all being really smart about it but I gotta say um I think a CGI trailer would be kick-ass and I, there is a little part of me that is kind of sad that we've got such good CGI trailers particularly the faction CGI trailer most incredible thing in the world because that was like so heavily tied to the lore and accurate and well done the prophecy CGI trailer was just like really random and it didn't really have any decent story to it, it was just very weird but the, the both of those CGI trailers were cool and I remember some of the earliest Guild Wars 1 videos that ever got big were people doing like um, music videos using those trailers there was one of uh, Evanescence I think and I'm sure there was a Linkin Park one too you know this this was the the period in the 2000s okay guys where there, there were these AMV out and they were using the Guild Wars cinematic trailers and it was so cool and there is a bit there is a part of me that's kind of sad that Guild Wars 2 doesn't have that and I would love to see um, a really well done CGI trailer that explores an interesting part of the story and gives us like another perspective um, on like one of these big moments in the story that just falls flat because the game itself doesn't tell the story very well which we're all very much familiar with at this point. And I think live action too um, would be just as exciting. Really well done live action. I love the Halo series because of when they do all this live action stuff. So, so good. I remember a really old uh, Halo live action. It wasn't really a trailer, but it was promoting Halo 3 where the production values were just so high and it just looked so phenomenal. I would love something like that for Guild Wars 2 as well. The problem is the live action trailer they did at launch was terrible, as you say. And why? Because they went live action, but it wasn't like a uh, roleplay, shall I say? It wasn't actually in the universe. It wasn't us actually there interior walking around, you know, a real lion's arch or something. It was this weird, crappy, oh, we're in the real world. And then it got really arty and nobody really understood. It was just bad on so many levels. You know, these kind of um, pretentious suggestions that they're breaking the mold of the MMOs with this guy like cracking out. It was just bad. It was just bad and I, I feel like that's a real shame. I commend them for trying to do a live action thing. Uh, how much can we really say that the developers of ArenaNet how much of a say did they have in the production of that trailer? So who do you really blame? Uh, it, it's hard to say. So that was a real shame. I think the greatest shame though is the New Living Story trailer that they put out quite recently is in essence the Guild Wars 2 trailer that we always want right if that had come out at launch things would be very 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 different but it didn't and you know we literally got the worst of the worst we got really low budget live action stuff that didn't really show in-game footage and then the, the dick move to top it all off was they spoiled the, the look of the final dragon in the final fight anyway um which was ridiculous absolutely ridiculous so yeah i think there were a lot of problems with the live action trailer if i could have chosen for it i probably would have gone something like what they did for the, with the living story trailer this year if they could have got that out 12 months earlier we'd be in a very different situation i do think a huge amount of guild wars 2's initial success rested on that trailer and i am curious how if they'd put out a better one how different things would have been but one other thing you have to consider is 
their game sold more copy. More people tried to log in at launch by far than they expected to do. And I don't know why their expectations, expectations were as low as they, they obviously were. But um, for them, maybe it's irrelevant that the trailer didn't do very well because they already peaked well past their expected numbers anyway. Right? So uh, that's always something to consider too. In the future, if they did do an expansion though, oh my god, can you imagine a really well done live action trailer that is actually seated in the universe? Oh my god, that'd be great. Or even just a CGI trailer too. Uh, would be also awesome. As long as they come accompanied with real in-game trailer footage too, which I guess they would do. Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling. There you go, guys. Uh, weekly Q&A. Let me know what you think, really. If, if I don't get the questions, then the series doesn't happen, really. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. This is your chance, again, to sort of interact in a nicer way with the channel. All the old Q&A stuff I did, you know, always used to do really well. So I'd love to pick it back up once a week. Uh, so I guess I will see you next Wednesday. Leave as many questions as you like. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. See us.